This week on Business Mike, the business of hair. My guest today is Bella Nakato. She's the founder and CEO of Enviriza Nacho, a Ugandan-based hair and beauty shop in Kampala. In today's show, Bella shares high inspiration for starting Enviriza Nacho, as well as some helpful tips for aspiring entrepreneurs trying to create skin and hair product lines. All this and more next on Business Mike. You're listening to the Business Mike podcast. Amazing interviews with inspiring entrepreneurs. For more amazing interviews, go to www.businessmike.com or download our podcast every Monday from Pod Africa. Hello and welcome to another episode of Business Mike. My name is Daudi and joining me today is Bella. Bella, can you just tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Hey everybody, my name is Bella Nakato and I run Enviriza Nacho and shop Enviriza Nacho, which is a platform for African beauty brands um, and we usually do all natural beauty brands. So non-toxic cosmetics, um, skin products, hair products, everything like that's happening in the natural hair community basically in Uganda, like things they need, but made in Uganda, made in Africa, um, sold through our shop. And yeah, I think, yeah, that's what I do for now. Now, before we started recording the interview, we had a very interesting pre-interview chat and uh, you are just touching on your inspiration for starting this business. Can you just share with a little bit more detail why you decided to start Enviriza Nacho? Okay, so Enviriza Nacho was basically a space I started just for me and my sisters to explore what it meant for us to be African, really, um, what it meant for us to embrace our natural hair as part of our heritage, especially living abroad for a while, what it meant to reclaim ourselves as fully African and also get out of toxic cosmetic habits. So embrace everything that was healthy because we were moving towards a healthier li- like way of living. So it progressed as a Facebook page onto shop space now that we have that has about 10 Ugandan brands, beauty brands in store. Um, yeah, that's what I do every day. I run it. Uh, I do social media. I am basically the CEO, chief everything officer of Enviriza Nature. I've had two guests of mine who actually have their products in your store. That's uh, Maxi from Livara and then Penina from the Moisture Well. So you were mentioning to me a story of how before you started the store, you were doing workshops, some of which had, um, you know, people who started these products. So can you just tell us more about what was taking place in these workshops and what you are telling um, the people who eventually went on to start some of these products? Okay, so our first ever Enviriza Natural workshop or hair meetup was basically one where we got to explore what if we stopped really depending on products from abroad and encourage people to make them from here because the sheer, best share butter in the world is from Uganda, hands down. So what if these people came up with products with our own share butter and like basically everyone down the chain is happy straight from the village out to the end product, the person who uses the product. So when we held that workshop, people were excited. Down the road, I have three brands from that workshop in my shop, Enviriza Nacho. And it's amazing. It's amazing what a little inspiration can really do. Now, that name, Enviriza Nacho, um, for the Ugandans who speak Luganda, it makes sense why you'd call it that. But for those who are unfamiliar, Enviriza Nacho, what does that mean? Enviriza Nacho literally means natural hair in Luganda, a local dialect in Uganda. But we want Enviriza Nacho to be a symbol of natural beauty, whether it's skin, involving healthy practices, eating right, um, just ensuring you take your health seriously and not sacrifice your health for beauty. You can have the best of both worlds. So we coined Envidia Natural. Surprisingly to the people who are really negative in the beginning about Envidia Natural, like it shocked us because we're like, what do you want us to call it? Something an African? So we stuck with it and even our shop is called Shop EZN, Shop and is a natural. And people warmed up to it. Like it brings a smile to someone's face when they hear the name of my business. They're like, Envid is a natural. That's different. And so it just stuck. Now, one of the challenges that we were talking about earlier was the fact that uh, people that use these products tend to prefer international brands, maybe because they have that trust thing behind them, also the quality and so on and so forth. But having interacted with people in this field um, before, it seems 
our products that are locally made are just as good. The only challenge they have is the mere fact that they are local. That alone makes people a bit skeptical on adopting them. So how are you as Envirza Nacho who, having these products in your shop? What kind of stuff are you doing to persuade people to understand that, yes, this is quality and it's just as good as anything out there? Okay, so the natural hair... I don't call it a movement or community, more like natural hair community has been around for not so long. So basically we are all learning. There is no master in natural hair. Everyone is still learning, even including people who have written books about natural hair and natural skin. So as Enviriza Natural, we feel that why can't we be part of those learning as we go along? If we all know that shea butter is good for the skin, and it's proven over our grandmothers and great-grandmothers used it in different parts of Uganda. So why can't we develop our own recipes from Uganda for the world? Why can't we develop our own recipes from, for Africa, from Africa for the world? So the issue of people actually preferring international brands is something we see as a challenge. We see it as some an exciting thing because we know once they see and they discover, it's like a learning landing point. And then they realize, wait, there's actually Ugandan brands that have been around for a while, a year plus, two years plus, who are doing amazing things about natural hair. I could name a few, uh, Livara Beauty, the Good Hair Collective, Kentaro Collection, the Moisture Well, Closet Candy Inc., Lake House Uganda, Ranika. Like, there's so many brands out there doing amazing things. Um, and most of those brands you can find in, in Virisa Natural, shop in Virisa Natural. So, it takes a while and we are there to help learn. So we do most of the teaching via workshops. Uh, in every other month, we have a workshop within shop where we teach people to look after their hair, kids hair. But then also we teach, um, we do via social media. But then also we teach in store. The customers who come in store with a need. Say I have eczema, I have um, balding, um, I have dandruff. We actually talk to them. And that's our main point of view because word of mouth really is our strength as Ugandans. We love relationships. So we are capitalizing mostly on talking, especially to those who come to the store. And how has the... Um the audience, audience, well, in terms of the customers, you said you've been in business for around six months there and thereabouts, but how have you seen people evolve? Have you seen a change in terms of people actually adopting these products and, and positively giving them nice reviews, recommending them? Or is there just a particular niche of people? Are the, is the customer base growing or is it just the people that are into local products that keep coming back? So at first it was a local niche of people. Uh, we noticed people would come, especially since the brands in store have been around for a while before the shop in Virisa Natural. So those faithful customers of those people who are close because we're in Tinder side. So those people close to Tinder, Nalia, the areas towards that part of Kampala and beyond would come to the store. But then over time, they would bring a friend and a mother and an auntie. And then we we're getting orders from abroad, from Kigali, from Nairobi. So... Now it has become new customers. People who find us online, on social media, they're like, I want a product. I'm going back to school. I want something, things like that. But before it was just the loyal customers, which kind of proves to you that these products actually work. So we're realizing both. We get so many repeat customers, people who are like, this is my staple. She didn't call it, it works for me. And then I'm stuck here. I love it. And then there are those who are new exploring. So they'll take a bit of this, sample that, and then keep coming back until they figure out what works like magic. And you mentioned to me earlier on that uh, it's not just Ugandan products, that you've been contacted by people that are outside Uganda as well who want to showcase some of their products in your store. So it seems to me that what you're doing is having an impact outside East Africa and, and to the rest of Africa. And hopefully, you know, it will start some sort of movement whereby, at least on the continent, majority of the products we use, not just hair products, but everything pretty much is, is made on the continent itself. That is something we're so excited about, having Africans excited about African products and trusting that the quality is authentic, like it's true, it's authentic and it's rich. So our, us embracing exclusively African brands is not only a way for us to actually showcase how we celebrate our African beauty, but it's also to stand by our word that if we are endorsing African brands or African beauty, why not start from home? 
why not make sure that down the chain, economically, even our family in the villages earns money, including the people who work in the factories, including the people now who work with the customers, including the end customer themselves. So it's sort of a selfish African, pan-African goal at the core, where we want to see our own people prosper, where we want to see our own excellence showcased in our stores. So we once in a while on our social media, we like saying we're Shop is an EZN, Shop and Vida is a natural, has products made in Africa by Africans for the world. So we are super proud of that. We stand by it and we take it on in all the things we do in Shop. And hopefully there will come a time whereby someone in London or in the US, when they go shopping for some of these products, they say, you know what, I want that African brand because I know the, the, basically the, the gaps or the hopes from the seed to the final product are much less than the ones of you know the products made in the US so well done to you and, and I hope that actually helps um, spread awareness and make this movement go on. We actually have people who now uh, buy gift packages of our products to take abroad because before they used to only take fresh fruit, now they're like we can actually take cosmetics, all natural cosmetics made in Africa and give them out as gifts you know, so it says something when someone comes all the way from Stockholm and all they want is a suitcase filled with just African products, conditioners, shampoos, butters, just to take that side and give to different people. And include people not only of African descent, by the way, even European descent, American, they just come and pick from the store because natural things work across the board, really. So we're super happy about that. And for the people who want to join this movement in terms of making these products, you obviously have a store where you showcase all these products. You've seen their quality. You've seen um, quality in terms of how good they are, quality in terms of their packaging and all that. So what tips or advice would you give someone who wants to join the movement and maybe start creating their own uh, skin oil or hair lotion, something along those lines? What key things must they do? What boxes must they check in order to actually make a successful product? We have a few brands in store right now and the reason we don't have every brand is because not every brand meets the non-toxic uh the non-toxic list we have really because there are some brands that are really good but when you see the toxicity levels or the ingredients there are no no so number one have the passion for it really be hungry about creating non-toxic cosmetics number two solve a need so if you're targeting dandruff, you're targeting stretch marks, you're targeting um, confidence, you're targeting just all a lax beauty product, solve a need because your customer lies, the audience lies in that need. Once you have ensured that your need, you're solving a need, you will find your tribe. Um, the third thing is <laughs> be prepared to work extra hard. It is not easy. The ladies we have in store are super women and super men. These are people who spend all night innovating. They go back to the drawing board over and over just to ensure that their customers are happy. So those three things basically, passion, solve a need, and work hard, extremely hard. Those ones. Once you have them, you just approach us as Enviris and Natural and your product, we go through proof of concept, we ensure everything has, is legalized and everything, and then we do not hesitate to take you in store. The more, the merrier. You mentioned those three qualities for the people that need to, or the people that are aspiring to create some of these products, but what about on your side? Um, what has the experience been, you know, from workshops all the way now to owning a shop as a business owner how has that um or what have you seen that has you know affected you in terms of um how you need to strategize maybe a few changes you need to make a direction you need to go something you hadn't factored in how did the workshop to an actual shop um affect you basically i like that workshop to an actual shop i think when we started in very natural we did not um, we underestimated the support we would get. We underestimated how people would fall in love with the idea, how the customers would want even more. So right now we're actually working on setting up even a salon to teach people how to use these same products, Afri made in Africa products, in their hair, how to use it for children, how to use it for adults, and also basically to just share healthy beauty care practices in shop. 
Um, we are also scaling up um, on shop size because more brands are coming in. Right now, if you've visited our shop, we like calling it a tiny piece of heaven, but it needs to expand, especially to accommodate the brands that are innovating day in and day out. Um, we didn't realize how many Ugandans are out there innovating, you know, in the marketplace. And so when we are approached by brands, it doesn't matter the size, whether small or large, if you, as long as you have, your products are amazing. We didn't anticipate how much they would see this as a good platform. Yes, we thought we'd have support, but this has, it's almost overwhelming how many brands are like, this is amazing, we need a platform. And also the ease and convenience of the customer. When they get there, they're like, finally, I can pick everything from here and go on to the next program, really. So we've learned a lot along the way. Uh, we're scaling up on all fronts. And I think we're also growing our team. And by growing our team, I mean training. I mean us um, learning how to talk to people, learning, relearning again, constantly reading about how to be better as Embrace and Natural so that we can provide an authentic experience. So we're literally growing as we go along. So workshop, we're still holding the workshops as we work in the shop. So. And what has been your favorite part of this journey so far? It's been a short one, I, I must admit. Six months is not that long, but what moment or what experience did you have having started this and you said okay wow this is something special I'm, I'm i'm definitely on the right track here i think most importantly it's seeing how the customers really give us positive feedback seeing not only just patriotism but the products actually work Seeing someone say, you changed my life. I never used to, because of eczema, I was so uncomfortable. I, my face, my confidence, and now I'm comfortable. And it's something that was just in the village. It's something that was just in my backyard. It's in Uganda. And the fact that I'm supporting my own people. So you find the customers have a no guilt appreciation of what we are doing in Enverisa Natural. And you find that the more the customers are happy, the more the brands also are happy in store. And so it just comes into a full circle. So that has just been amazing for us. And we hoping, like we keep aiming for even more and more customer happiness, really. When you hear the word success or successful, because we all aspire to be successful, who is the first person, you know, that comes to your mind? And why is it that that person symbolizes success to you? That is a very hard question. Hmm? Um, I think to me, there is not one person that signifies success to me. It's like a mosaic of people. But also, for me, success is happiness. Success is contentment. When you actually feel that what you're doing is fulfilling and it's making a positive change. I was part of ISEC, which is a, a youth organization um, in, I think, more than 200, 180 countries worldwide. And I got a chance to volunteer and work in different countries around the world. And you find that life is, st stays the same around the world. Everyone wants to achieve that happiness, that contentment. And so true success really is defined by you. Really, true success cannot be defined by anybody, not your mom, not your dad, but yourself. So for me, success is a personal thing. It is happiness. It is contentment. It is at the end of the day, a peaceful sleep, bliss, really. So that's my definition of success. That's a good answer, I must admit. And uh, the final question is, if you were cast away to a desert island and you could take one of each, what book would you take with you? What movie would you take with you? And what song would you take with you? Uh, if I was cast away on a, on a desert island, the book I would take with me is The Power of Positive Thinking by Neil Donald, Donald Walsh. Um, the movie I would take with me is possibly August Rush. The song I would take with me is, I think I would not really take a song. I think I would take the sound of my mom's voice. I'll just take the sound of my mom's voice. Uh, I think I'll be good on that island for a while. Now, you mentioned that book, The Power of Positive Thinking. It's a book I've heard of before, but I've never really quite understood what it's all about. Why, why, why that book? What's, what's inside that book? The Power of Positive Thinking is, I think it's, it's like a mind-blowing book. 
this is a book that was written very 19 early 1900s by a gentleman and it states how that the tune of your mind co- controls the results you get the more you think positively the more it affects your life positively we as human beings tend to spiral into negativity so easily we complain we quarrel we find fault so easily so when you intentionally and it's very hard but intentionally tune your mind to positive thoughts to thinking the best of something to choosing the higher ground there's a way your life becomes better there's a way negativity and bad things just fall away yes they happen but it's like you're looking at them through i don't want to say rainbow or, or sunny glasses but there's a way you can think at the back of your mind your adrenaline is not running so fast so you can actually work your way out of that whole um that whole challenge okay i think i'm summarizing it too simply because for me it has been it's something i digest in chapters over and over and it's something i keep on like you need to keep on reading it really because there's a lot because in our daily lives you you're influenced by so many things the things you watch some person's energy life it is it is challenges and as a person who is trying to do something big you're trying to own a business and run it right you're trying to change the world for positive um you're trying to create a movement a positive movement you really need to keep your mind on top notch things on positive things on i can do it and yes we sleep once in a while sleep off like you fall down once in a while but you have to get up dust yourself up off and keep moving so for me i'm always in i'm reading such books always um so power power positive thing for me is a life changer it's if you've never read it go google it there are free copies online pick one up and just read or listen to the audio version at least right and uh, how can people get in touch with you on social media or your website in case they want to learn more about yourself or Enviriza Nacho well i don't really put myself out there <laughs> so if you want to know more about Enviriza Nacho and shop Enviriza Nacho uh go to our we- our website is still being uh, constructed right now it's under renovation so we are at instagram enviriza nacho or instagram shop enviriza nacho and then facebook and viriza nacho e n v i r i z a n a c h o and twitter and viriza nacho so tweet us facebook message us we're always online and then if you're in kampala you can whatsapp us and there's always free consultations hair skin you can just pass by Right, thank you so much Bella for taking that time to share with us your story and your knowledge and we wish you the very best with Enviriza Natural. Thank you so much for having me Daudi. This is an amazing thing you're doing. Thanks again. Thanks for listening to the Business Mike podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you'd like to listen to more episodes just like this one, simply go to businessmike.com. I would love to hear from you. So if you've got any questions or feedback, you can reach me on Twitter at Daudi Mugabe, on Facebook at Business Mike, or email that's daudi at businessmike.com. Don't forget, we have a brand new episode every Monday. And until then, take care.